Legally Blonde is one of the most popular movies out there with Reese Witherspoon showing us what it's like to be a lawyer at Harvard Law. If I'm gonna be a senator, well, I need to marry a Jackie, not a Marilyn. <laughs> so you're breaking up with me because I'm too blonde? Welcome back to my Trademark Lawyer channel. As you can hear, I am still a little bit congested, but I'm doing better than I was in this video right here. If you wanna know what happened, make sure to check it out. But in today's video, I want to talk about a really popular video that I can't believe I haven't talked about already, and that is Legally Blonde. What in the world does a trademark lawyer have to say about Legally Blonde? Well, there are lots of moments that I can relate to and lots of moments that I cannot relate to. So I want you to stick with me. Let me tell you what parts are realistic and what parts are just... This is the type of girl that Warner wants to marry. This is what I need to become to be serious. What a law student. As if it was that easy. Law schools for people who are boring and ugly and serious. <laughs> Jude Button there. Law school is for people that are boring and serious? Well, okay. I mean, it's true. You have those people in law school that like to hide books so that you can't find them, and then you feel like the odd man out because you were the only law student, and then you can't answer the questions, and blah, blah. I mean, there are those types of people in law school, and lots of people might come to my channel and think that I'm boring, but I do think that there's an exception to every rule, right? For every boring lawyer, there's gotta be a couple of non-boring lawyers, so I don't think every lawyer is boring, and damn it, are we all ugly or what? I don't think I'm ugly, what? She said, I don't need backups. I'm going to Harvard Law School. And when you are a law student, once you graduate from law school, you're preparing to find a job. That is the type of tenacity that you need. You need to say, that is the job I'm gonna land. That is the job I'm going to create for myself. So her tenacity is like spot on. And what it takes to get into Harvard Law, what I knew when I applied for law school is that it doesn't matter what you majored in. You could major in anything. You don't have to major in criminal justice or political science or history or any of that. You could be a math major, a fashion merchandising major, and they will take your application and maybe even accept it. Do you understand what subject matter jurisdiction is? No. Well, due to habeas corpus, entitles her to what is legally referred to as equitable division of the assets. So I think that when you get through your first year of law school, everybody kind of feels empowered because you've learned this legalese, you've learned these legal words and you feel like, damn it, like you know something, right? So I think that when you like apply this language, although it sounds really great and really fancy, a lot of what she said didn't make a lot of sense at all and it was misapplied so it wasn't even like properly applied in that sentence. I think that when you're a non-lawyer the use of these legal words can sound and, and can be really intimidating so you just kind of think like oh my gosh this person really knows what they're talking about. I certainly don't know what they're talking about so I'm just gonna listen to whatever it is that they're telling me before I get in any trouble. Yeah and in this situation it worked so. I'm, I'm sorry are you here to see me? No silly. So it is true that sometimes you can definitely be that odd person out in law school because there is a certain type of personality that exists in the student body, but I think that you shouldn't be afraid and you shouldn't let that deter you if that's what you want to do because you definitely will find your circle of people you mesh with and that you gel with and that you want to hang out with. And I know that when I was in law school, I, I hung out with a great group of people that wanted to socialize and that wanted to go out and that wanted to have a life beyond law school that also took their law school careers really seriously and they really wanted to be lawyers and they did their homework and they were really smart and they had great personalities and they were just cool people. Finding them was a real highlight of the journey because you expect law school to be a certain way and then it doesn't turn out to be that way and then it, it kind of turns out to be better than you expected because you find people that are just like you. No matter where you fall on the spectrum, you are going to fit in. Well, Warner, do you remember when we spent those four amazing hours in the hot tub after winter formal? This is so much better than that! <laughs> I think that getting into law school and passing your law school exams and securing that internship that you really wanted is definitely a lot better than a lot of things. 
because you work so hard. I mean, I just can't emphasize how hard you work when you're in law school, especially the first year, because it takes so much out of you that for her to tell her ex-boyfriend like, hey, it was better than that night we had, I think it just, she can't be lying. I mean, cause they're just, you've literally been fed to the wolves your first year of law school. So for something so great to happen, like passing an exam or especially your first law school exam, or securing an internship, which was the, the situation here in the movie. I mean, yeah, that comes with like a huge psychological, mental, and emotional boost that just kind of like surpasses a lot of good moments that you've had in your life. So I think that she's like spot on there. Elle Woods. Actually, um, I wasn't aware that we had an assignment. I wasn't aware that we had an assignment. I mean, in law school, if you're not prepared for every single class and they call on you, that's usually not an acceptable answer to say you weren't aware that you had an assignment. Everybody in the class knows that there's an assignment. I mean, all of law school is based on reading, just reading, 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 and more reading. And by the way, our books are like this thick. And if I'm honest with you, I used to buy case notes because it used to make it a lot easier for me to just dissect the information. I'm somebody who does much better at reading a couple of sentences and understanding what everything is all about as opposed to reading 40 pages and trying to dissect the information because then I lose sight of the forest for the trees. Are you the same way? Ms. Woods, you may begin your questioning. First of all, I would like to point out that not only is there no proof in this case, but there's a complete lack of um, mens rea. So discrediting the witness is exactly what she was doing there. She found a little flaw in her storytelling, the witness's storytelling. And so the way she knew to discredit her was by sticking it to her and asking her a couple of questions revolving around the perm to point out that she was lying. Circumstantial evidence is in our criminal law class, we were taught that most cases are proven or disproven because of circumstantial evidence or lack thereof. When there's not direct evidence that somebody committed a crime, you have to find circumstantial evidence and there usually is circumstantial evidence. In this case, nobody saw the killing occur, but circumstantially because of the fact that she was there and because she heard the gunshots, that's the only way to maybe prove that there was a murder but if you're able to discredit the witness then you can't really believe what she says right and in this case then she admitted that she was the killer i mean watching this movie definitely triggers like certain things that your professors would say or certain situations but you know trademark law what i do is nothing more